Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Is the Federal Reserve going to partner with Ripple via the FedNow program, which was announced just yesterday? There's a lot of chatter today on social media, in particular on Twitter, uh, what this means. I've got an article that I'm going to share with you from AMB Crypto on this very topic. Uh, and I got uh, a number of opinions to share with you. And, um, and then I got one non-XRP story. It's real brief that I'm going to share towards the end of the video which is that uh, one Satoshi, uh, you know, it's the smallest unit of a Bitcoin, one Satoshi is now worth, <coughs> excuse me, more than seven national currencies out there. So I just found it fascinating. I thought I'd close out the video with that little piece. But uh, before we get going here, if you would please delicately tap that like button. And if you are a fan of Ripple and XRP, my friend, you're in the right place. Go ahead and subscribe. You'll be glad you did. Maybe. <laughs> All right. So here's a piece from AMB Crypto, and it is titled... Ripple may be gambling to be part of a Federal Reserve's FedNow service, which is set to give United States payment system a, face, a facelift. And let me just state at, at the outset, and I'll give you rationale for why I believe this. I, I want to share with you what I think, though, as, so that we can keep it in mind as I'm going through the details here. Uh, is, the, is the Federal Reserve wanting to utilize Ripple technology and or XRP specifically for settlement? Uh, on, on the topic of X current, maybe. I'm not ruling that out. I, I am not ruling that out. Uh, I think it would be unreasonable to rule that. Uh, although I, I don't see evidence of that, I'm not going to say no to that specifically. Um, will they be utilizing XRP? Uh, I think the answer to that we can state flatly today is is no. And, and mind you, I am Mr. XRP bull here. I'd love to see XRP used in every capacity possible, but just engaging in critical thinking and uh, having gone through all the information that I have, which I'm going to share with you in this video, I think the evidence points to, at least currently, uh, there's there's uh, no intent for, uh, for, for XRP to be used within the FedNow system when it launches uh, four to five years from now. So let's get into the content here of this particular piece. And what is FedNow? Let me cover this real quick. FedNow is a 24-7, 365 interbank RTGS settlement service with clearly uh, with clearing functionality with the sole purpose of faster payments. FedNow would also provide infrastructure to promote ubiquitous, safe, and efficient faster payments in the United States. Lyle Brainerd also clarified that FedNow will be operating this payment service alongside private sector providers. In addition, FedNow service will be available to around 10,000 banks across the country that are already connected to the Federal Reserve. The main takeaway from the announcement is that banks can now clear and settle payments between themselves, which previously would have to go through the central bank. The lingering question on everybody's mind after watching the FedNow presentation is the identity of the private sector operator who will work with the Fed. And I'm going to share with you who it might be. There are some ideas uh, tossed about on Twitter, and there's a list. There's one in particular that I just started learning about today, so I can't fully report on exactly how they operate. But since it has been brought to my attention, uh, to my attention, I want to bring it to your attention as well. And uh, I'll be covering it more, no doubt, in future videos. Anyway, the piece continues here. Ripple's global head, infrastructure innovation Dilip Rao, tweeted, and this was this is the one from yesterday, right? Yeah, this is from yesterday. He tweeted out, "Great move. Fed now will drive the transfer t transformation to real time payments infrastructure around the world, both domestic and cross border." And they were any tags at Ripple Mission Internet of Value, and then there's a link to uh, the, the piece which I, I covered yesterday. Uh, Fed payments improvement Twitter um, uh, Twitter account states that. Uh, or cover the uh, the announcement about the FedNow program. Anyway, uh, this has caused a lot of ruckus in the Ripple and XRP community, with many speculating that Ripple could be that private sector operator that the Fed was talking about. Okay, and this, uh, there's a subheading here addressing the speculation: Can Ripple be the private sector company working with the Fed? Ripple has openly shared that it was and is working with the Federal Reserve to improve payment systems in the United States. It is no secret. However, Ripple announced on 21st of July, 2017, that Ripple's proposal for faster payments stood out for speed and transparency. And then there's a McKinsey assessment uh, of Ripple stated, and here, here's the quote now, Ripple enables financial institutions 
the ability to operate cross-border payments faster than the two to four days common today. The solution bolsters the, the certainty of the cross-border payment experience by providing end-to-end -end transaction visibility to banks, as well as settlement confirmation. Ripple enables more transparency in the total cost of a, a payment to the payee prior to authorization if participating banks are willing to provide this transparency. Okay, that's all reasonable. That's perfectly fine. Moving forward here. Apart from the above, Ripple also received praise for being flexible enough uh, to be integrated directly into a financial institution's or third-party provider's uh, platform to which financial institutions are already connected. Um, although, and that's true. And if you, if you think about Ripple's technology, especially as it pertains to X Current and X Rapid, with X Current being the messaging portion, um, and that's bi-directional software, completely different than the unidirectional software that Swift has to offer from a messaging perspective. But you can, yes, use XRapid to settle, but if you don't want to, in terms of implementation with ex the existing if infrastructure, uh, you can still uh, settle via traditional Nostro accounts. So in, in terms of implementing with what already exists, yes, right there, clearly. And then it goes on to state, although FedNow is a good direction, banks would need capital to clear and settle payments, the details of which were not provided in the presentation as of yet. This is where Dilip Rao's tweet on why faster payments are good uh, for XRP comes into the picture. And this is a tweet from Dilip Rao from October 11th of 2018, and it states, To fund settlements, final delivery to beneficiary, the sending bank typically needs to have a pre-funded Nostra account at the receiving bank or a correspondent in the middle. And then the piece continues. However, one could argue that this is outlandish as the government would not opt to use cryptocurrency for, for, for uh, providing liquidity for obvious reasons. Um, let me stop right there before I read further. <coughs> We already know that in terms of regulatory clarity, it's completely lacking. And so that's one reason right there to be highly skeptical of the idea that any part of the government would embrace XRP today. And I'm not saying that it wouldn't ever in, in the future. I'm not definitively stating that. I'm only talking here in the now, right now today, would XRP be part of, uh, XRP be part of Fed now in any capacity. And even if you just think, I'm going to show you other reasons why I don't think today it is. Uh, but if you just think from a regulatory perspective, I think you can flatly state, no, it's it's highly unlikely just for that particular reason, especially you can think about all sorts of people talking about um, the, the stance, whether it's, um, oh, what's his face? There's, well, there's Steve Mnuchin. He's, he's been talking about Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency and how it can be used uh, for laundering money and this and that. And then you've got President Trump's recent comments on, on Bitcoin, how he says he's not a fan of it. And then you've got uh, the Fed chairman and, and, and all the con comments there. And it's just it's become clear. And then there's Hester Pierce, part of the SEC, about how uh, there's there's not going to be uh, regulatory clarity uh, on uh, on cryptos, probably for some time from her perspective. So there's all sorts of stuff going on there that would lead someone to believe that there's probably nothing behind the scenes with XRP. doesn't mean that there's nothing with Ripple. I'm not stating that. I am not stating that. I just don't think that today there's any plans for XRP. Uh, but who knows if things change in the future. The, the world could look a lot different 10 years from now, or even sooner than that, you know? And, and so who, who knows what the stance would be in terms of utilizing XRP as a mechanism, uh, for, as a bridge for cross-border payments. Anyway, let me read a little bit further here. Uh, a well-known XRP enthusiast in the community addressed this issue in a tweet. This is Galgatron. He's in the AMB crypto article, and referencing Dilip Rao, seemingly. Uh, he's a great salesman, but XRP is dead in the water without liquidity. The feds are never going to liquefy XRP when they can just create a stable Fed coin at zero cost. <clears throat> and I don't believe in, in the article, I don't believe that there's enough context in, uh, in regards to Galgatron's tweet here. Uh, us, uh, and us within the XRP community understand that uh, walled gardens can serve a purpose. If you really want to solve the global problem of the fractured cross-border payment situation, if you really want to solve the problem, you need a global solution, which is why you need a decentralized digital asset to solve that. That's why tr uh, the issue of trust is at the core of this. If you're talking about how the federal government would operate, uh, what, what Gallagher is talking about makes absolute sense. It's not an anti-XRP statement whatsoever. It's just an acknowledgement that uh, you know you would expect the federal government to create a digital asset that they don't control. It's decentralized and then solve a global problem. I don't think that's the place of the federal government. So if they wanted to speed up uh, payments within a walled garden, okay. And so that's kind of what you're talking about when you're talking about a stable Fed coin at zero cost. And then, of course, it's backed by what? Well, the government, right? So that is what it, there is no actual market value, but that, that's what it would be. 
All right, so let me read a little further now. Uh, Even if one were to neglect the question of liquidity for time being, Ripple still has Ryan Zagone on the board of FATF, and uh, Ripple could still be uh, concerted with the feds considering blockchain technology and the solutions it offers. And so the the question is posed, what if it's not Ripple? The FATF had 16 proposals, which were evaluated and classified by a qualified independent assessment team into very effective, effective, somewhat effective, or not effective brackets based on 30 criteria. Ripple received an overall evaluation of somewhat effective, while there were others that received higher ratings than Ripple. Moreover, comparing the assessment um, between Ripple, Dwala Incorporated, and the Clearinghouse clearly shows that Clearinghouse garnered favorable ratings following, which is Dwell Incorporated, followed by Ripple. Okay, Hence, it cannot be surely concluded that Ripple will be working with the Fed. Now, here's a tweet from Sheesh Burla. He is a Ripple employee, one of the original Ripple employees dating back, I don't know, seven or eight years or whatever the heck it's been. He's been there a long time, and I quote him a lot on this channel. Here's a tweet from him in the evening yesterday. Ashish Burla. A lot of the pieces we write about are thought leadership pieces about the industry in general and not specifically about Ripple. If there is a, a Ripple angle, I'll be explicit about it. Okay. And so here, they are not being explicit that there is a Ripple angle in any capacity with Fed now. So you want to read between the lines there? I mean, it seems kind of flatly stated that there's, there's not a connection here. And that this is a Ripple employee stating this. So it doesn't matter what you or I want to be true. This is what is being stated right now by a Ripple employee. And so the, the piece ends by writing, could it be Ripple? If so, would all of America's banks linked to the FedNow service be powered by Ripple's tech? The community is in limbo, wondering if Ripple is actually involved in the FedNow service or not. And I, I want to say before I read any further also, <clears throat> even if this is not Ripple, this does nothing to change Ripple's plans in utilizing XRP as a bridge currency for cross-border payments. This, this f- flatly stated is not some big negative if Ripple is not in some capacity involved with the FedNow program. It just is not going to matter big picture. Ripple's going to keep doing what they're doing because they seek a global solution for payments and settlement. The only way you can do the settlement portion in real time and have it be a global solution is if it's not a, gold, a walled garden, There's no, it can't be a stable coin. It's got to be XRP or a decentralized asset. And as we know, uh, XRP is the only one being positioned for this. It's the only one in the world being positioned for this right now. And so either the technology works or it doesn't. I don't even see a close second for this particular use case, the way that Ripple's going to market. That's it. So Ripple's fantastic. They're still killing it out there. Uh, to, in my mind, it just doesn't matter. It's not some huge negative thing if they're not involved with FedNow in some capacity. Uh, you know what I think? It's, it's fantastic the degree to which that they're working with regulators um, and, and with, with Congress, the way that they're communicating. They're very open about it, and I value it. I think that's the right way to go. So to me, ever, all signs point to bullish still. It doesn't matter. And so here's the tweet from Ashish Birla that uh, that was cited in the, the article here. And let me just read up. So where this came from, it was originally from Dilip Rao. There was a tweet I already read from you about the, the f- embracing Fed now. Hey, it's great. Transformation, real-time payments. I recovered that. And um, somebody named Does This Pass responded to Dilip Rao writing, what am I missing? Just because a Ripple employee tweets, it doesn't make it a Ripple connection. And then he tweeted Ashish Burla, which is why he responded, actually. And he wrote, if, if this were Ripple, why a five-year build time? And that's a good point, because, again, I, I don't know that I mentioned in this video, but... Oh, wait, no, I did at the, at the outset. Uh, the FedNow program is not going to be launched until an estimated 2023 to, or 2024. So why up, up of a five-year build time, given that Ripple technology already exists today and it's ready to be plugged in? It wouldn't take five years. And uh, then this person writes, if it's not Ripple, is this now a competitor? And then tagged Galgatron also, uh, you know, I'm interested in your opinion. And then that's where Ashish Burla came in with the comment that, again, if there's a Ripple angle, I'll be explicit about it. Dilip Rao responded, plus one to that. So they're, they're all about being transparent as long as there's a, there are not non-disclosure agreements in place that would preclude them from being that transparent. So th- that makes perfect sense to me. Let me pull up another tab now. Um, there is a tweet from XRP Research Center. And I'm going to pull up the, the screen capture of you. Um, this was retweeted by Galgatron, and and he wrote, this pretty much dismisses XRP from the Fed now implementation, uh, specifically XRP. And let me show you why. Let me read. The, I'm going to read this whole screen capture for you, but there's one part that's highlighted on you if you're looking at the screen. That's the part that matters the most. 
So FedNow service description. The FedNow service will support interbank settlement for financial institutions, provision of end-to-end faster payment service, and in combination with private sector real-time payment services, provide infrastructure to promote ubiquitous, safe, and efficient faster payments in the United States. Features under consideration for the FedNow service include, and there are three bullet points, and I'm going to read all three of them. Uh, The second one is the most important one. Um, The first bullet point, processing individual credit transfers valued at $25,000 or less in real time within seconds on a 24-7, 365 basis. Okay, cool. Here's the second one, though, and this is what it sounds to me, and I think Galgatron's right. I think it precludes XRP from being considered as the solution here, among many other reasons, as, including the five-year timeline and the fact that there's not regulatory clarity within the United States. On top of that, here's the third reason that it's not XRP. Uh, settling payments through debits and credits to balances in financial institutions, master accounts at the, at the reserve banks, uh, with an end of day balance recorded for each day of the week. Again, so that's not XRP. Settling payments through debits and credits. Okay, that's not the way that XRP would be used as a bridge currency for anything. We're, we're talking about on a ledger just debiting and crediting accounts back and forth. And so that, that's, again, just fundamentally not how XRP operates as a settlement. And then the third bullet point is it states providing liquidity through intraday credit on a 24-7, 365 basis under the same terms and conditions as for uh, current Federal Reserve services. All right. And I think that's all I wanted on this particular tab. Yeah, that's right. Okay, next piece here. Um, wait, actually, that's the same one. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> um here we go. Yeah, so here's the company that admittedly I need to do a little more research on. I just don't have time to dig in further today, but I, I, I think, feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't bring this up. So I just want to share with you the very minimal amount I know about this right now. Um, there's a tweet from uh, at Billy Balcock. <laughs> oh, God, I didn't read that name until now. The, the name shows up as John Task, but the at, it's the at part is Billy Balcock. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, that's probably like a real name, and then I'm just sitting here giggling about it. Anyway, uh, there's a tweet that states, um, Ted Galgatron, I have never heard of this mentioned before, and I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's Calypton. Maybe that's how it's pronounced, Calypton, K-A-L-Y-P-T-O-N. Uh, they were looked at and, uh, and approved for uh, want of a better word. What's your take? Is it cross-border? So then Galgatron retweeted this and wrote, read this attachment to see all the FedNow con- competitors in context. Okay, and So you can click on that. Um, if you click on their web, this is their website. I'm not really going to read through through this, but um, I, I will read the very top part. This is how they're describing themselves. Uh, Calypton is an award-winning patented technology to enable significant cost reduction to banks and financial services organizations by allowing real-time disintermediate settlement to mitigate industry non-compliance fines and increase market share. All right. And, and again, I, I promise if this is something especially that I, I will be covering more in future videos. Um, but I didn't need it to hammer home the points that I really wanted to make in this video anyway, so I think that's okay. Uh, All the way 08 responded to this, and I found this highly fascinating. Uh, so it looks like he dug into this a little bit. And remember in the, the piece that I was uh, reading from maybe Crypto, they were citing how uh, entities were being rated as very effective, effective, somewhat effective, or not effective. Well, check this out. Here's a tweet from All the way 08, and this is on Calypton. Seems like the Fed liked their solution for cross-border payments, but it had noted limitations. They still scored it very effective. Looks like these guys might be the company building the FedNow solution. I'd bet that it's customized for the Fed and not for resale. And now you can see it on the screen. I'm not going to read through this, but if you want to take a look, feel free. You can do a quick screen pause if you're curious enough to read through it. And so, so that that's where we're at on that. Uh, and you know, there's another tw- tweet here. Maybe I didn't have it pulled up for this video. I thought I did. But even Galgatron acknowledged, "Hey, I'm not ruling out that there could be some sort of implementation of X, X current uh, w- w- with the program." Um, not that he thinks that's happened. It's just not, it's just not something that um, it makes sense to completely rule out at, at this particular point. It, it's really just easier to rule out XRP just at this juncture in time. And again, you know me, I am Mr. XRP Bull, but let's be realist here also. It's not all puppies and sunshine and rainbows all the time here. <laughs> no, it's the, you know, the, 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 I, just, I don't think that there's evidence to support that XRP is going to be used in any capacity with the FedNow program. If you find anything, I'll be happy to report on it. And I would, I mean, I would really be happy to report on it, okay? <laughs> like, I am invested in XRP. I have actual skin in the game, so I am, I am, uh, I'm, I'm good on that. But anyway, that, that's what I've got for, for that particular topic. I am absolutely really curious on 
on your thoughts below. What, what are your individual tanks? Drop takes a, drop some comments. If you think I missed something, uh, uh, if there's something key, uh, please bring it up because I'm, I'm sure we're going to be talking about this in future videos. And uh, there's a lot of angles to consider, and there's so much data out there that I, I certainly could have missed something. But from my perspective, these are the key points in, in, on, on the topic of whether or not Ripple technology is being utilized, whether X current or X rapid. These are the most pertinent points as I see it. But again, uh, I'm just one guy, so let me know if you found something else. All right, last piece, and then I'm going to wrap up the video here. This is from Bitcoinist.com. One Satoshi is now worth more than seven national currencies. A Satoshi isn't worth much. But that's by design. At 100 millionth of a Bitcoin, it's the smallest unit Bitcoin is divisible into. If Bitcoin price hits $1 million, then a micro Bitcoin will be worth a dollar and a Satoshi the equivalent of one cent. However, one Satoshi is already worth more than several national currencies, which means that in some countries, owning just one hundredth of a Bitcoin would make you a millionaire. And here, there's a seven listed on the screen right here. So I just found that concept fascinating. I didn't really have too much additional commentary. I just thought in and of itself, that quick blurb was, was fascinating enough. So I'll, I'll, leave you, uh, I'll leave you with that and wrap up the video here. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.